this, this is great. This is great because in our two minute pre interview planning, he was going to be the Super Bowl yeah. and I was going to be a little bit bearish, but it looks like we're about to flip the yeah. script okay, let's on flip the live air. Let's flip uh, it. Because I am super bullish right now, oh, yeah? more bullish than I've ever been. Oh, yeah. Is your crypto working for you? It can be with yield farming. But what are the risks? Hacking, volatility, poor smart contracts, scams. Even if you overcome the risks, there are still limitations. Do you have a million dollars to invest? Yield farming is a very complex, time-consuming, and expensive process. Can you imagine that not only you need to possess advanced skills to mitigate your risk and check smart contracts, but also you need to quit your job? In order to get the highest return, you need to manage thousands of platforms and check protocols around the clock. Well, not anymore. We are proud to announce the SwissBorg Smart Yield account. It's now possible for anyone to earn yield on most of your cryptos, such as USDC, Bitcoin, Ether, BNB, and only starting with 10 euros with the tap of your finger. So how does it work? It's simple. On a daily basis, Oracle scans and monitors all the different investment opportunities and delivers for you the best investment returns. So how is that more secure? Not only do we assess the best risk reward ratio, but also your assets are protected by our MPC technology and our safety net program. And how it does deliver return? Well, because our system is scanning the market every single day, you get the optimal return on that day. How do you get started? It's easy in three different steps. The first one, you deposit. The second one, you start the yield program. And the third one, you start relaxing, enjoying your passive income. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the Smart Yields, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community, blockchain, blockchain, crypto, love. welcome back to Crypto Nights. This is a crazy, <laughs> crazy edition of Crypto Nights. We're gonna talk about the bullish and the bearish scenarios for Bitcoin and the predictions with two awesome guys from two completely different generations. We have here on my right side, Carl the Moon. Exactly. And then on the other side, we have Tone Vase, Bitcoin OG. Disclaimer, guys, despite the fact that we're all bullish, Tone will be a bit more conservative and bearish as he is. And then we have our very optimistic friend. I'll let you guys to it. Have fun, gents. See you. All right, so Carl, good seeing you here in Dubai. You too, man. Man, Always it's been a while. Seeing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Last time was in Singapore, I think. That's probably true, yeah. So uh, you have always been the bear? I have. Well, you joined the market around 2017. Yeah. When, uh, how much of the upswing did you catch when you came into the space? I jumped in like at 4,000 um, okay. before, before the, the, the So most of the year, yeah. the majority of the year you were there. Yeah. Right, and then you had to enjoy a two-year bear market. Yeah. And to me, the bear market ended on March 20th, uh, March 13th, 12th, actually, when we had that big crash. And uh, I've been a bull since. Yeah, I love it because uh, you got so much uh, negative feedback. Which oh, you yeah. were bearish and like everyone was like hating. But, but I I'm mean, still here. How many YouTubers quit yeah, yeah, during yeah, yeah, that yeah. time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's very cool because you actually, I mean, you were right in hindsight, like everyone Everyone, when you when we saw this big Corona dump, I mean, I was actually thinking about you. I was like, ah, tone base. <laughs> I was happy for you. I was like, that's nice. Cause like, I, I remember how, um, I mean, it's hard to uh, go against the majority because the majority is always so, um, it's I mean, hard, so convinced. but you have to do that. This is the, uh, when everyone is on the same side of the trade, that's when things start to go bad. So the question is, uh, we're sitting here, it's 2021. Bitcoin is in uh, low 50,000 range right now. Everyone's thinking it's gonna go up. Is it gonna go up? That's an amazing question. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'll share what I think. So I think that um, ever since the Corona dump, where you went bullish, we haven't seen any major correction. We haven't seen any correction more than 30%. The biggest one was just like a, a couple of months ago. The, and if you look at other bull markets in Bitcoin, we have always seen huge corrections 
uh, and 40% is well within the realms of uh, what is normal. We haven't even seen 40% in like the last year now, which makes me a little bit um, um, skeptical of the, the whole price action. I think that we're too, like too many people are foaming in at the same time, driven by this whole like institutional narrative. I mean, of course, institutions are jumping in, but I feel like people are like over speculating it in like in the short term. So uh, now I'm always, no, always so doing this. This is great. This is great because in our two minute pre-interview planning, he was going to be the Super Bowl yeah. and I was going to be a little bit bearish, yeah. but it looks like we're about to flip the yeah. script okay, let's on flip the live it. air. Let's flip uh, it. Because I am super bullish right oh, now, yeah? more bullish than I've ever been. Oh, yeah? Uh, because the corporates are getting in. Obviously, Elon Musk, most recent. Michael Saylor can't seem to buy enough Bitcoin. And um, now that I'm here in Dubai, I'm hearing all these rumors how Dubai is about to, and UAE is about to buy up a bunch of Bitcoin. But for me... The biggest driver that made me most bullish was the U.S. election. Because watching that live, covering the election live, and I felt that they cheated. And that made me lose respect for the U.S. government. And that in turn makes me lose respect for the U.S. economic system. And this is probably why the dollar is faltering. Not because they're printing too many dollars, but because people are losing confidence in the dollar. And... Corporates are scared. Everyone is scared. Not Again, not because the dollar is bad, but because they don't trust the U.S. government anymore. And once, once people lose trust in your government, they will move that money to anything they have confidence in. And Bitcoin is the ultimate alternative. So this is true. I, I really agree that everything that is happening right now in the macro um, economic stage, everything is literally... Like the scenario is literally what Bitcoin was made for, this whole money printing and we're seeing um, like financial disaster. And I think that Bitcoin is taking a lot of um, like um, interest for like people are interested in Bitcoin because it's the best place to kind of hide from this whole uh, disaster. And I think that's also why, I mean, I'm super bullish on Bitcoin. I really think that 300,000 could easily happen before the end of this year. I really think that's possible. Um, I think it could go even higher than this. Uh, but I really think also that we will see a huge, like more volatility. I think that right now we've just been going basically like exponentially up without having any like punishment for the majority. Like usually we always have to see some kind of um, correction to shake out some weekends because I'm getting so many messages from people now, random people like aunts and uh, and like old like relatives and like people messaging messaging me about Bitcoin and it's just. Um, that's usually a, a time when like, too many people are, are getting at the same time. And um, I, I think it's very, very likely, in my opinion, that we get at least a 50% correction before we reach $100,000. That's basically what I believe. Um, whether this happens after we reach 70000 or after maybe 60000 or maybe from now, that remains to be seen, but I really believe that we need some kind of correction. I actually agree with that. Uh, my latest targets were around 65,000 before a more serious correction. But now that we just had a 20% correction, I think we delayed it a little bit. If the, for me, if the price goes back above 54, 55,000, uh, now that we've dipped from uh, 59 down to 48, 47, uh, if the price goes back about 55, I will now be looking for 65 or as high as 75 before that 40% correction comes. Yeah, so I think the, um, the institutions that are jumping in now, they are definitely changing the game because we're having um, like the big money coming in, like the billions and maybe even trillions of dollars. Um, and we're still early. I think that out of 640,000 publicly traded companies, it's only like 12 or so that have put Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So it, we're far away from um, having um, all of them come in. Like we can see so much more upside. Um, and that's why I actually think that 300,000 before the end of this year is very, very possible. And that would also line up exactly with the stock to show ratio. No, I think that's way over. 288, isn't it? Uh Oh, no, I, th I thought it was lower than that. I thought, I thought it stabilized around like 120, 130. Uh, I think the ratio is at uh, like 100,000, but 
looking at the previous um, price action. Oh, no, the overshoot. overshoots. The, yeah. over, the overshoot on the exponential rise. Exactly. So oh, yeah. it, it overshoots, yeah. and, acor and according to him, he thinks that 288,000 could be the next um, top, if I'm not mistaken, uh, before the end of the year. So that and that's according to the stock to flow ratio, which is of course something fundamental. That would be crazy, man! Quarter million dollar Bitcoin. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm gonna be a little bit uh, on the conservative side on this one. Uh, for me, I am looking at this bull run to be a double bubble kind of run, similar to what happened in 2013, but not to the same percentage extent. So I'm looking for this first peak to be in that 65 to 75 thousand dollar range. And the second peak somewhere between 100 and 200. I personally would be surprised if Bitcoin, a little surprised if Bitcoin crosses 200K within the next uh, 12 to 18 months, but it's possible. Uh, it's possible, but my target for, the, for this year is over 100. Yeah. And I actually agree with you with the double bubble thing. I really think that we're going to replicate the first big uh, bubble rather than the 2017 one. one yeah. yeah, Because it, it, we're just going up so fast right now. We're going up. And that's what I'm saying. This, this correction that I'm talking about, I think this 50% correction is what you're talking about as well. We need this, um, this cool down period before we go up in this next rise. And, and um, I think that, uh, yeah, the, the next rise before the end of this year could reach. Um, I'm also extremely confident in 100,000. 100,000 is easy, um, but I really do believe that we can see much higher than that, so. Um, I would actually be more surprised if Bitcoin uh, goes below 20,000 ever again than I am if it hits quarter million this year. Yeah, yeah, but. And, but and no. that means buy the dips. Uh, basically, we're in a bull market. As much crap as I was getting during a bear market, I would never short this market for the next year or two. You only buy, sell, buy again. I would never short this market. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. When Bitcoin is in the bull run, yeah, you get wrecked if you try to short because it's like there's too much demand because we all know that Bitcoin cannot get inflated. So it's like it's a fixed supply, but the demand is always going up and uh, the amount of um, institutional interest right now is just mind blowing. And like you said, Elon Musk buying Bitcoin for me, that is huge. That is maybe one of the biggest things that could have happened to Bitcoin because he's the richest man in the world, which gives him so much credibility. Like, not only institutions, but like all retail, everyone is looking at what Elon Musk is doing. So he's buying Bitcoin through Tesla. And, uh, and also, like, it was $1.5 billion. I think that's something like 10% of the whole Tesla, like, cash reserve. So it's like a huge move. And I really do believe that we are going to see thousands and thousands of companies follow suit. And um, they're going to have to if they want to remain competitive. Yeah. And that's great. Like the amount of wealth that some of these companies will have, they'll be able to give us more cool products. True. Yeah. Tesla, they already made more profit on Bitcoin now than they made in the whole history of Tesla, <laughs> uh, which is mind blowing. Like it is. Isn't that insane? And it really is. That is a story that will, of course, uh, give more FOMO to other companies. And uh, and uh, so in this bull cycle, 300,000, sure. But like next bull cycle, I think a million is easy. So a million dollars per Bitcoin. And that means Tesla is going to make. Well, by then, I would love to see the world talk about Bitcoin and Satoshis, not Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because unit bias is a big problem. Yeah, yeah, this is true. I mean, we cannot sit there with these digits and stuff. It has to be Satoshi. So a, coffee, a cup of coffee will be like 300 Satoshi. Yeah. Something like this, yeah. Do you think that uh, we need a second layer solution for this to work or what do you uh, think? We already have it, uh, Lightning. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin is becoming very difficult to use on chain for small transactions. So it's time to start learning Lightning, which is why I want to transition more into educating people about how to use Bitcoin and how to understand Bitcoin than trading Bitcoin. But Lightning right now, I mean, I, I also believe that we're going to see a solution. I'm not sure if Lightning will be the solution, but we need a solution. Um, and um, I'm confident that there will be something that comes up within the next like five, 10 years uh, because we need it. Because, of course, right now, like you said, on chain, you cannot really use Bitcoin for these small transactions. Uh, but it's still a perfect store of value, perfect gold. Um, but um, as soon as we get this... Um, this solution for Bitcoin to be used as a medium of, ex of exchange, then that's when we're going to see this huge mass global um, adoption, I think. And 
then I think even one million dollars is conservative. I think we can reach five million dollars actually if Bitcoin takes over the whole. It really has no limit. I yeah. do believe it will be the dominant currency of the world. Same. I, I think that's a good note to end it on. Yeah. Carl, always a pleasure. Same. Uh, tell the people where they can follow you. Yeah, the moon. My channel is called The Moon and Tone Vase. I mean, just Google him and boom, you have so much. <laughs> yeah, you can find me, Tone Vase, YouTube channel, and some conferences. Unconfiscatable.com, understandingbtc.com, conference in Malta, and The Financial Summit. Usually it takes place in Bali. Looking at Zanzibar now, a little more freedom. Hopefully Carl will be at the next one. I will be And there. that's where the big traders will be. <laughs>